the words of our Lord, to blessed sister Josepha. We are going to speak of my passion, that your soul may constantly feed on the remembrance of it, and that my souls may find in it food for their hunger and drink for their thirst. And now, Josepha, I will begin by disclosing to you the thoughts that filled my heart while I was washing the feet of my disciples. Mark how the whole twelve were gathered together, none excepted, John the beloved was there, and Judas who was so soon to deliver me to my enemies. I will tell you why I willed to have them all assembled together, and why I began by washing their feet. I gathered them all together, because the moment had come for my church to be manifested to the world, and for all the sheep to have but one shepherd. It was my intention also to show souls that I never refuse grace even to those who are guilty of grave sin, nor do I separate them from the good whom I love with predilection. I keep them all in my heart that all may receive the help required by their state of soul. But how great was my sorrow to see in the person of my unhappy disciple Judas the throng of those who, though often gathered at my feet and washed in my blood, would hasten to their eternal perdition. I would have these to understand that it is not the fact of being in sin that ought to keep them from me. They must never think that there is no remedy for them, nor that they have forfeited forever the love that once was this. No, poor souls, the God who has shed all his blood for you has no such feelings for you. Come all of you to me and fear not, for I love you all. I will wash you in my blood and you shall be made whiter than snow. All of your offenses will be submerged in the waters in which I myself shall wash you, nor shall anything whatsoever be able to tear from my heart its love for you. Josepha, let your soul be seized today by an ardent desire to see all souls, especially sinners, come and purify themselves in the waters of repentance. Let them give themselves up to thoughts of confidence, not fear, for I am a God of pity, ever ready to receive them into my heart. 25th February 1923. Kiss the ground and write, for we are going on with love secrets. I will tell you my reasons for washing the feet of my apostles before the last supper. In the first place I would teach souls how pure they must be, to receive me in holy communion. I also wish to remind those who would have the misfortune to sin, that they can always recover their innocence through the sacrament of penance. And I wash the feet of my apostles with my own hands, so that those who have consecrated themselves to apostolic work may follow my example, and treat sinners with humility and gentleness, as also all others that are entrusted to their care. I girded myself with a wild linen cloth to remind them that apostles need to be girded with abnegation and mortification if they hope to exert any real influence on souls. I wished also to teach them that mutual charity, which is ever ready to excuse the faults of others, to conceal them and extenuate them, and never to reveal them. Lastly, the water poured on the feet of my apostles denotes the zeal burned in my heart for the salvation of the world. The hour of redemption was at hand. My heart could no longer restrain its love for mankind nor bear the thought of leaving them orphans. So to prove my tender love for them, until time has ceased to be, I resolved to become their food, their support, their life their all. Could I but make known to all souls the loving sentiments with which my heart overflowed at my last supper, when I instituted the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. My glance ranged across the ages, and I saw the multitudes who would receive my body and blood, and all the good it would affect, how many hearts I saw that from its contact, would bind forth virginity, and how many others, that it would awaken to deeds of charity and zeal. How many martyrs of love did I see? How many souls who had been enfeebled by sin and violence of passion, would come back to their allegiance and recover their spiritual energy, by partaking of this bread of the strong? Who can describe the overwhelming emotions that filled my souls? Joy, love, tenderness, but alas, but a sorrow also. Later I shall continue, Josepha. Go now in my peace. 2nd March 1923. Humble yourself Josepha, kiss the ground, and never resist my will. Now write for my souls. I want to tell them of the poignant sorrows which filled my heart at the Last Supper. It was bliss for me to think of all those whom I should be both companion and heavenly food, of all who would surround me to the end of time with adoration, reparation and love, this in no way, diminished my grief at the many who would leave me deserted in my tabernacle, and who would not ever believe in my real presence. 
into how many hearts defiled by sin would I not have to enter, and how often this profanation of my body and blood would serve for their ultimate condemnation. Sacrileges and outrages, and all the nameless abominations, to be committed against me passed before my eyes, the long lonely hours of the day, and of the night in which I would remain alone on the altars, and the multitudes who would not heed the appeals of my heart. Arjasifa, let the thoughts of my heart sink deep into yours. It is love for souls, that keeps me a prisoner in the blessed sacrament. I stay there, that all may come, and find the comfort they need in the tenderized of hearts, the best of fathers, the most faithful of friends, who will never abandon them. The Holy Eucharist is the invention of love. Yet how few souls correspond to that love which spends and consumes itself for them. I live in the midst of sinners, that I may be their life, their physician, and the remedy of the disease is bred by corrupt nature. And in return they forsake, insult and dismiss me. Poor pitiable sinners, do not turn away from me. Day and night I am on the watch for you in the tabernacle. I will not reproach you. I will not cast your sins in your face, but I will wash them in my blood, and in my wounds, no need to be afraid. Come to me. If you but knew how dearly I love you. And you dear souls, why this coldness and indifference on your part? Do I not know that family cares, household concerns and the requirements of your position in life, make continual calls upon you? But cannot you spare a few minutes in which to come and prove your affection and your gratitude? Do not allow yourselves to be involved in useless and incessant cares, but spare a few moments, to unite and receive this prisoner of love. Were you weak or ill in body surely you would find time, to see a doctor who would cure you? Come then, to the one who is able to give both strength and health to your soul, and bestow the arms of love on his divine prisoner who watches for you, calls for you, and longs to see you at his side. When about to institute the blessed sacrament, Josepha, these were my feelings, but I have not yet told you what my heart felt at the thought of my chosen souls, my religious, my priests, but I will tell you this later on. First Saturday 3rd March 1923. I want to tell you this, that my best loved, and specially favored souls, my priests and my consecrated nuns, may learn it through you. If their infidelities wound me deeply, their love consoles, and delights my heart to such a degree, that I so to speak forget the sins of many others on their account. 4th March 1923. If you want to console me, now is the time. Tonight, very near here, they are holding a meeting in which I shall be much insulted. Offer yourself as a victim in such a way as to make reparation for the outrages committed by these souls. Poor souls, how they sin against me. How will they manage to keep out of that place? O oh my father. Whilst these sinners offend thy sovereign majesty and unfuriously outrage the blood of thy son, look upon this willing victim which united to my heart, suffers and makes reparation. Deign to receive her sufferings in union with my merits. O oh father of all goodness. Now let me plunge your soul in the bitterness that is in my heart. Josepha 3. 6th March 1923. I'm going to reveal to you the greatest mystery of my love, of love for my chosen, consecrated souls. Begin by kissing the ground. When about to institute the Holy Eucharist I saw the privileged throng who would be nourished by my body and blood, some would find there the remedy for their shortcomings, others consuming fire for their imperfections, I likewise saw them gathered around me as in a garden, each separately rejoicing me with her flowers and their scent. As of a vivifying sun, my sacred body gave them life, and warmed their cold hearts, to some I went for comfort, to others for refuge, to others again for rest, with that all these cherished souls knew how easily they could console me, harbor me, or give rest to me their God. It is this infinitely loving God who, after freeing you from the slavery of sin, has given you the incomparable grace of your vocation, and has mysteriously attracted you into the enclosed garden of his delights. This God who is your savior has made himself your bridegroom. And he himself feeds you with his immaculate flesh, and slakes your thirst with his blood. If you are sick he will be your physician, come to him, he will cure you. If you are cold, come to him, he will warm you. In him you will find rest and happiness, so do not wander away from him, for he is life, and when he asks you to comfort him, do not sadden him by a refusal. 
alas, what sorrow it is to see so many who have been endowed with my choicest graces become a cause of pain to my sacred heart. Am I not always the same? Have I changed? No, my love is unalterable, and will endure to the end of time with the same tenderness and predilection, that you are unworthy I well know, but not for that do I turn away from you. On the contrary, with anxious solicitude I look for your coming, that I may not only ease your troubles, but also grant you many favors. If I ask your love, do not refuse it. It is so easy to love love itself. If I should ask you for things that cost, know that at the same time I will give you all the grace and strength you need to conquer yourself. I hope to find in you my comfort, therefore have I chosen you. Open your whole soul to me, and if you are conscious of having nothing worthy of me, say with humility and trust Lord thou now est both the flowers and fruits of my garden, come teach me how I may grow what will please thee most. To one who speaks to me this way, and has a genuine desire of showing love, I answer beloved, if such is your desire, suffer me to grow them for you, let me clear the ground of those sinewy roots that obstruct it, and which you have not the strength to pull up, maybe I shall ask you to give up certain tastes, or sacrifice something in your character, do some act of charity, of patience, or self-denial, or perhaps, prove your love by zeal, obedience or abnegation. All such deeds help to fertilize the soil of your soul, which then will be able to produce the flowers and fruits I look for. Your self-conquest will obtain light for a sinner. Your ready patience under provocation will heal the wounds he inflicted on me, will repair for his offense, and expiate his fault, a reproof accepted patiently, and even with joy, will obtain for a sinner blinded by pride the grace to let light penetrate his soul and the courage to beg humbly. All this I will do for you, if you will give me freedom. Then will blossoms grow quickly in your soul, and you will be the consolations of my heart. Yes, my beloved even your falls comfort me. Do not be discouraged, for this act of humility, which your fault drew from you has consoled me more than, if you had not fallen. Take courage, go forth steadily, and let me train you. All this was present to me, when I instituted the blessed sacrament, and my heart glowed with desire, to become the food for just souls. If I have taken up my abode among men it is not merely to live among the perfect, but to uphold the weak, and sustain the lowly. I will make them grow and become strong. Their good resolves will be my solace and I will rest in their wretchedness. But there are some among these chosen souls who will inflict sorrow on me? For will they all persevere? Such is the cry of grief that breaks from my heart, I want souls to hear it. Enough for today Josepha. Farewell. You comfort me, when you entrust yourself entirely to me. Let me tell you my secrets for souls, since I cannot speak to them thus every day. Let me make use of you, while you are still alive. 7th March 1923. Write today concerning the plain, endured by my heart, when being constrained by the fire that consumed it, I devised the marvel of love, the holy Eucharist. And while I looked at those many souls, that would feed on this heavenly bread, I could not, but see also the indifference by which so many others, consecrated souls, priests, would wound me in this sacrament. These were those who would grow cold, gradually yield to routine, and worse than routine to weariness and lassitude, and, little by little to tepidity, still, I wait all night and watch and watch in the tabernacle for that soul, fervently hoping that she will come and receive me, that she will converse with me with all the trust of a bride, telling me, of her sorrows, her temptations, her sufferings, asking my advice, and begging for the graces she needs for herself or others. Perhaps she has dependent on her, or in her family souls, that are in danger and far from me? Come I say to her, let us discuss everything with perfect freedom, be concerned about sinners, offer yourself to make reparation promise me that at least